and finally, this might look a little bit silly, but we separate the head from the body. All right, welcome to the second video in the series. We will talk about creating custom assets. There's a reason we call this 3D plus AI sandbox, and today we are totally gonna find out why. Today we generate textures, we generate models, we combine 3D plus AI together, and spoiler alert, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> That's the whole point of it. Let's jump right into it. Starting off with Majorny generations from the last video, the task now is to turn these models into 3D assets. And right from the bat, ChatGPT can come in handy. I would never suspect that would be the case, but here we are. You can upload an image, even if it's a person without a leg, and write a prompt as simple as give me full character from the front and side on a white background. And boom, it's here. You know? And honestly, we are just scratching the surface here. You can go even further. If you want your characters to crouch, walk, or hold something, you can just kindly ask, you know, like, be sure to be polite. That's exactly what we did. We typed, make him hold a sensor, and it worked surprisingly well. What's really cool is that we ended up with some custom poses, and those custom poses are essentially like mini stories in our creative sandbox. It's a great way to make things feel more unique and less generic. But the truth is that working with ChatGPT is not just unicorns and double rainbows, you know, like they are downsides as well. There are times when it works great, and then there are times where it just doesn't work at all. It just doesn't listen, and that's normal. It can be slow, and the resolution is not best either. But honestly, if you get anything usable to start with, that's already a win. Okay, so moving on, let's say we have something from ChatGPT or Midjourney, but it's not perfect. So yeah, no big deal. At this stage, we can clean things up and increase the overall quality of our image rather easily. Let me show you. Nothing is stopping us from taking this photo into Photoshop and cleaning something up or adding parts to the character. We can use Generative Extend to get the full character, get the missing parts of their outfit. In this case, we actually got a bit too much from AI, so we cut it very roughly. And since there are some rugged edges left, we can clean it up with a nice little trick. We can use a selection brush, set the opacity to around 60%, by the way, the selection brush is a different approach than using a lasso tool, in case you didn't know it. And fast forward, uh, we keep the general shape, but fix those rugged edges we had before. Nice and easy trick to know. We crop it, and then one last thing, and we change the sensor from gold to a more metallic desaturated one, and we wanted our assets to feel as believable as possible, and the truth is, you can rarely see them in gold. So yeah. Moving on, and we are ready for upscaling. You can use any upscaler you like, but we usually go for Magnific.ai. All the settings are visible in the top right, and one of the most important ones is 8 times upscale. And as you can see here, the difference is massive. We get lots of details for free. Unfortunately, we get some minor issues as well, a few hallucinations here and there, but nothing we can't clean up in Photoshop, just as we did a minute ago. So yeah, back to Photoshop, you'll notice one hand has a glove, while the other one has visible fingers. So at this point we turn back to Firefly, this time using the lasso tool with a simple prompt. We get the fingers and choose the one that fits best. The last adjustment is the face, with the fake glass eye. You know, like it kinda looks badass, but we decided to cover all the face details with hair. So we draw a mask, created a gradient from the bottom, and once again we use selection brush with Firefly. After a second, it blends everything nicely, just like we did with the dress earlier on. And with this cutout, we can move on to creating 3D models. But before that, let me show you another example. This one's from the Cacti project. Right away, you'll notice it has a more painterly, stylized look. And on top of that, it's also low resolution. So yeah, we need to improve it. And yeah, we can use the same way we did a minute ago. But in this specific case, we went straight to Magnific. You can see all the settings in the top right corner again. The goal here is to make everything look sharper, better gold mask and yeah, like overall more clarity. And for this particular image, it turned out great. But unfortunately, upscaling some of the other generations didn't go so well. Here's another before and after example. On one hand, we are getting something more realistic, but on the other hand, it's AI hallucination time. You know, like this face in the stomach always cracks me up, even as I'm editing this nonsense, but yeah. Here's another case. 
This one was one of the sitting priests with the drums. Suddenly a face forms out of the hand and there are some extra hands lying on the ground as if it was completely normal. But yeah, we don't worry about it that much. You already know the drill by now. Don't expect AI to be perfect. You know, as long as you keep moving forward, you'll find a way to make it work. Just don't expect perfect results from AI every time. If you do, you're going to hate working with AI. We get back to Photoshop for another round of cleanup. Nothing new here. I just want to show you that there's really nothing to stress about. First, we mark the face with Firefly. Press generate and boom, one part is done. We do the same with extra fingers. Everything is nicely normalized. Next up, we remove the background from the character. We use the select subject to isolate the character. We also use color range to remove the sky. And after that, we fix this weird hand, which slipped under our radar. Two attempts with Firefly and after a minute, we get a totally normal hand. And finally, this might look a little bit silly, but we separate the head from the body. We will actually create two separate assets from each image. We figured we will get more polygons this way, and we might even reuse the face on a different body later on. So yeah, just wanted to keep our options open. And finally, here's a quick overview of all of those images that we did, um, some of the cutouts, different ones, um, different poses. Some are a little bit crazy, some are less so. And that was our input for all the 3D generation. And just before we jump into it, a quick heads up, we'll be diving much deeper into Firefly, upscaling, and, and a little bit of matte painting about three videos from now. There's two full videos coming your way, packed with post-production techniques. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. All right, now on to the 3D asset generation. For Panikida, we created many cutouts as well. You can see an entire army of cutouts, and from each we will create a 3D model. And this part is actually pretty straightforward as well. For asset generation, we use Tripod 3D. You just upload an image, ideally on a white background, and it's basically one click solution. You can adjust the poly count and hit generate. It doesn't burn too many credits, and by the way, we are not sponsored in any way, <laughs> we just love using it. And after a while, we get our geometry. As you can see, even from something so odd, we can create something decent. And from here, we can do different things. We can divide it into certain parts here, and we can do some retopology. However, we go to Texture tab and simply click Generate Texture. And again, after a while, we have it done. We see that this model has a bit of glossiness in the preview, but we don't worry about it. What's left is to download our model, export it as FBX, and call it done. Now, how about the quality? Well, that depends on who you ask. Are they beautiful? Well, maybe you can tell me. <laughs> yeah, all jokes aside, they are not perfect and they don't need to be. They are solid enough and that's all we need. So yeah, we use AI to solve smaller problems and we just keep moving forward. And even though it doesn't look promising at first, let me show you how it can work. See exhibit one. On the left, we have the raw 3D rendering. The lighting looks good. The volumetric effects are doing the job, but the model and textures, well, it is what it is. But yeah, if you look at the far right, everything is nice and sharp. This is the image after post-production and all the details are back. So what's the trick? I can already tell you that we used a retexture tool in Midjourney. We transferred the details back. Sometimes you can get away with bare minimum in 3D and still end up with something spotless. And this is a rather strange workflow, but it's somewhat the heart of this 3D plus AI combo. As I mentioned, we'll break down the full technique four weeks from now. This is just a heads up so the 3D models are totally fine even though they don't look perfect right now. An additional side note, if you happen to work a lot on interiors and with custom furniture, I think you might be interested in our 3D plus AI masterclass as well. We dive even deeper into techniques of recovering details from seemingly mediocre 3D models and still end up with stunning results. All the links in the description. Okay, so that's it for the character generation. Now let's break down this chapel, because this one is a bit weird. In some areas, it has these super fine details, in others, it's like okay-ish, best, but at the same time, it has some AI trickery. So yeah, I want to show you some techniques and then slowly bring this lesson home. Starting from the bottom. 
We used mega scans as our based assets because let's be honest, like everyone loves them. And by the way, we literally used two or three objects in total. There's no need for more. On top of them, we scattered some plants, some shrubs. Along with the 3D models, there's something called a fuzzy map and you can use it to scatter moss or yeah, add some weeds for variation. Lastly, we just increased the glossiness and tweaked the displacement a bit. That was enough to get us going. Then we have these candles and candlesticks on top. Those are actually generated with Tripo 3D as well. It's the same workflow as with the characters. We started with Midjourney, cleaned them up, upscaled them and sent them over to Tripo 3D. The models turned out to be pretty good in this case, but one thing that we did was to rebuild the shader. Actually, I think we used some worn out metal from Corona library, but just used the normal map from Tripo and plugged it into the normal map or like a bump map slot and that was it. Next up, the columns and a bunch of textures. For the pillars, we used Midjourney again. We experimented with different prompts, but nothing crazy. We used prompts like wooden, orthodox, or just strange to make it feel less typical. And after some time, we landed on this one. It has these like wooden elements that were pretty cool. From there, we brought it to Photoshop to adjust the proportions. It was a bit short and stubby, as you often get with square mid-journey generations. So we extended the base, adjusted the aspect ratio and set it to Tripo 3D as well. Another thing is custom textures. We had those custom shapes and we wanted to fill them up with textures. But at the same time, we didn't want to spend too much time on it. So in this case, I can share a really cool technique. We took a screenshot of the object and then headed over to Midjourney. We went to the edit tab on the left and started uploading our images. We gave it reference images. Those are some basic wooden textures. We prompted it and fast forward, it gave us a nice result with something like a plant-like motif. Nothing too obvious, but just enough to add a sense of history and age. And now we can potentially use it as a texture, but it's way faster to generate a 3D model from that image. So the same as before, we uploaded it to Tripo 3D and that way we also get the normals and glossiness maps along with it. Pretty cool technique to know. As for the rest of the chapel, there's really nothing special. We put some plants hanging from the ceiling. We apply some wood panel textures to the roof and that's about it. So yeah, a couple of final thoughts. You don't need to take 3D to 105%. You know, like you don't need to obsess over every detail. Sure, there are times when details really matter, but more often than not, you can cut corners and still get great results because there are still plenty of AI tricks, matte painting and AI 3D and post-production go well together. So yeah, as long as you move forward, you'll get there one way or another. And you'll definitely see more on that mindset in future lessons. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.